Hello and welcome to this video on linear dependence, linear independence of solutions. So in a previous video, um, one titled uh, the Ronskian and general solutions, I showed that um, there's this function called the Ronskian which takes y1 and y2 as arguments, those are functions, and out of it comes a function itself. Now if the Ronskian is not equal to zero for all t, then y1 and y2, which we're assuming here are solutions to an ODE, these can be used to form a general solution, and that general solution will look like c1 y1 plus c2 y2. Now that's if the Ronskian is not zero. So um, what I want to do here is extend the tools used to determine whether you have a general solution to include the notion of linear dependence. So two functions, y1 and y2, are called linearly dependent if there exists c1 and c2 non-zero. And so that c1 times y1 plus c2 times y2 is equal to zero. So that means that the two are linearly dependent. And it, these uh, two functions can be called linearly independent if no such c1 and c2 exist. Okay, so let's just do a quick example here of linear dependence. So my claim written down here already is that y1 equal e to the minus 2t and y2 equal e to the minus 2t minus, uh, plus 1 are linearly dependent. If you look at these long enough, you'll notice that they're actually just one is a scalar multiple of the other. In fact, linearly dependent functions will always have that feature when we're talking about two of them, but this the notion of Ronskian and the notion of linear dependence generalizes to more functions, which is useful when you're talking about um, ODEs of higher order than just two, as we've been focusing on so far. And that's the main the main use here. It's a little bit simple, overly simplistic, but we're going to calculate it and we're going to go through it anyway. So here we have a case where I can calculate a C1 and a C2. I get an e for c1, and if I choose minus 1 for c2, you can see that c1 y1 plus c2 y2 is e times e to the minus 2t plus minus 1 times e to the minus 2t plus 1. And bases are the same. I can add those exponents. So I get a very similar expression here minus that same one. And that gives me zero. So this tells me that the functions that I started off with up here, y1 and y2, are actually linearly dependent. Now, why is that a useful thing to know? So let's try to, or let's prove this statement here, and that is that y1 and y2 being linearly dependent guarantees that the Ron scheme is zero. So if you can show that you found a y1 and y2 that are linearly dependent, you've got more work to do. Okay, so um, so let's just write down what that means. So for y1 and y2 to be linearly dependent means there are c1 and c2 constants, non-zero, so that c1 y1 plus c2 y2 is equal to zero. And now, if I know that c1y1 plus c2y2 is equal to 0, and this is for all t, then I can take a derivative of this expression, and I get c1y1 prime plus c2y2 prime also is equal to 0. And I can rewrite this in matrix form. y1y1 prime, y2, whoops, no, no, prime there, y2 prime multiplied by c1 c2 is equal to 0 0 that's just a different way of writing it so we're now to the point where we have the matrix that's useful for calculating the Ronskian written down in an equation in particular we have that this matrix multiplied by c1 c2 where c1 and c2 are non-zero is equal to 0 okay so let me just copy this over to the next page for easy reference Okay, so um, so once we have this matrix expression, um, what does it mean? Well, if if this matrix were invertible, then we would multiply through by a inverse.
So I'm going to call this A to get C1, C2 equal A inverse multiplied by 0, 0. And that is just 0, 0. And so what this says that if A is invertible, then C1 and C2 have to be equal to 0. But we know that's not true. So that means that A cannot be invertible. And a non-invertible matrix has determinant 0. So we know that the determinant of y1, y2, y1 prime, y2 prime is equal to 0. But this is exactly the Ronskian. And so what we've concluded is that if you know the two functions are linearly, in, are linearly dependent, you have more work to do in finding a general solution. Now, the other option is you can calculate the Ron scheme directly and um, see that it's either zero or non-zero, and that will tell you similarly. But the uh, notion of linear dependence is useful if you have some other way of calculating uh, dependence instead of calculating Ron schemes.